Welcome to part two of this Football Manager 2016 Wonder Kid experiment involving Christopher Eyre, the Norwegian Wonder Kid. In part one, I holidayed up to the age of 25, so maybe you want to check that out first before watching this part. But in this part two, I'm going to be holidaying until the end of his career, through his prime, into his sort of latter years. Let's see how he does. Please hit the like button if you're enjoying this Wonder Kid experiment series so far there's lots of players to come like I said in part one I will be doing some videos where there's more than one wonder kid to just to compare against certain players the next video will be a couple of uh, highly requested players throughout the series so far so I hope you're looking forward to that it's now the year 2025 so he is now 27 years old you can see he's only got six goals for Norway he hasn't improved on that but does have 72 caps now so certainly still uh, a very important player for Norway you can see he's still worth 29 million pounds earning 66k a week and he is still at Napoli he's played eight seasons at Napoli now um, I'm not sure his attributes have improved dramatically since the last update as passing is back up to 16 I can see that visions now up to 17 and we'll just have a quick look at his career stats over the last couple of years then. So, uh, last season, he played 48 goals in uh, 48 games in all competitions, scored seven goals, six assists, a few man of the matches, and a decent average rating. And in the season just gone, five goals in all competitions, 12 assists, and a 7.11 average rating overall. Not bad at all. Let's have a quick look to see if he's managed to, to win anything yet. They have, which is good. They won the Italian Super Cup and the European Super Cup, which means Napoli must have won something recently. But a uh, maybe maybe it's not showing. We've we've had some problems before with it not showing. They did win the 2024 Euro Cup, uh, which is how they won the Super Cup in 2024 as well. So, yeah, let's have a quick look to see why. He didn't play in it. Can we see the game? 2-1 against Chelsea in the final. Martin Udgaard scored for Chelsea. Wow, this is really interesting. However, Napoli, where's Aya? He's there. He did play. So he definitely got a medal. This is this proves that it's some sort of word glitch, that it's not showing certain titles for certain players for some reason. So Aya has won the uh, the Euro... Oh, this is the Euro Super Cup. That's why. I'm looking at the wrong one. I wanted to look at the Europa League. That's why I'm getting confused. So let's look at the Euro Cup. Who did they beat in the final? They beat... Let's go to final. That would help. Braga beat Juventus this year. Napoli beat Palermo last year. Oh, we can see it. So where was Aya? Why was he not playing? Aya is not there. But, like I've said many times before for both Sterling and Odegaard, he would have received a medal if he'd played a certain number of games in the Euro or Euro Cup or Europa League as it's known. But that's really interesting that Aya defeats Odegaard in the Super Cup. Chelsea won the Champions League, Napoli won the Euro Cup. Yeah, <laughs> that's quite that's quite good really. It's now the year 2028. So A is now 30 years old and has almost got to 100 caps for Norway. Seven goals in 99 games. For Norway, his value's dropped to 15 million, I guess, because he's now reached the age of 30, and he's earning 66k a week still at Napoli. I guess he's a, he must be a Napoli legend by now. Let's have a quick look to see if he's on the list. He well, he's not on the list, in fact. Is he on favoured personnel at least? No, that's unfortunate for him. But he's still uh, a, a major player in the team, as you can see here. Where is he? Uh, yeah, there he is. Playing in defensive midfield, still played a huge number of games this season. In fact, the second most number of games out of any player. So he's certainly a very important player to the team. Still picking up quite a few assists. This year, just gone 11 assists in all competitions, one goal. Decent average ratings. He's averaged 7.18 over the series, over the, over the seasons. Let's have a look at his achievements then. Hasn't picked anything up. Yet uh, since 2024, according to this anyway, we can't definitely be sure. And awards-wise, he's never been um, included on any of the World Player of the Year awards or anything. But he's been a very good central midfielder. I'm sure if you want to sign him on the game, he's going to be quite cheap by the looks of it. Because Torino got him for £900,000. Sign him, see if you can turn him into a world-class player. 
try and get him to be better than on this save. Obviously, from save to save, it will be different, but he's turned into a very good quality central midfielder or defensive midfielder on this game. For Norway, he's still considered the second best player. They're down to 45th in the world at this point. They've really dropped off, not having such a good time, unfortunately. So it's now 2031 and A is 33 years old, coming to the end of his career. But because he's a defensive midfielder, he might go on for quite a few more years. He's now reached 121 caps for Norway and managed to score 10 goals. He still looks a quality player. Nothing's really d dipped dramatically. Pace and acceleration are starting to go down and they're both on 10. But he's a very good player, as you can see here. Still at Napoli, still an important player for the team. I hope when we look at the end of this episode he will be a legend for Napoli but but maybe not I don't know maybe that maybe it's a bit harder to get onto the legends list at Napoli anyhow in the last three years he's continued to still play very well although his average rating in the last couple of years has dropped below seven unfortunately but still getting plenty of assists this season 14 assists in all competitions one goal as well never been a prolific goal scorer 34 goals on this game 109 assists and 47 man of the matches I don't know if that's just league games it's including there overall though he has uh, managed to win something Euro Cup I guess the second Euro Cup that he's won this one he did actually play in the final they just won it this year in fact so we should be able to look at the game in a bit more detail they beat Lille in the final 2-0 and where is he where's a uh, there he is only got a 6.5 before being subbed off on the 73rd minute. But at least he's added another European trophy to his cabinet, which is great to see. Yeah, good to see now. Is he still in... Oh, he's top of the list because Udegaard's retired from international duty. Aya is now top of the list. They're, they're down to they're 47th in the world rankings. They have dropped down to 78th. They're not having such a good time at the moment, unfortunately. If we just have a look at the World Cup, they finished third in their group in Group D in 2026. The European Championship, they've been a bit unlucky, as you can see here, uh, being defeated in the groups every year 2020 and 2024 but in 2028 they got to the the second round before losing to Italy on penalties he's still going at the age of 35 and he's got 137 caps for Norway now and 11 goals is he the most capped Norwegian player because Udegaard has retired remember so let's have a quick look at the records all-time top goal, goal scorer is Mohamed El Yunusi who uh, yeah, that's quite a while ago, I think. But most caps is Christopher Aya, 137, which is fantastic to see. Youngest player and goal scorer is Martin Udegaard. But uh, Aya has overtaken his uh, Udegaard's record, I guess, of caps because he retired quite young from international duty, as a lot of the, the real star players tend to do on Football Manager for some reason. He's still an exceptional player technically and mentally physically he's gone down a bit although things like balance jumping reach natural fitness and strength are still pretty high for his age and he's still at Napoli battling on there uh, average ratings have definitely dipped but he's still getting a quite a few assists this season 11 assists from his position in defensive midfield no he's playing central midfield now he's actually played three games up front as well he's not playing defensive midfield at all now I don't know whether that's because he, uh, that Napoli have played, changed their formation or whether they just feel he's better in central midfield now. So nothing else of note that uh, Napoli have won. They were runners-up in the, the Super Cup, so they lost that one, unfortunately. Awards-wise, still being named in the best Napoli and Norwegian team every season, as you would expect, but nothing else interesting. There's his biography. When is he going to retire? Let's find out. Well, that ended up being a terrible anticlimax because he actually retired at the end of this season. So he's retired at the age of 35. I checked ahead a year and he's vanished off the game. Unfortunately, I forgot to click keep history after retirement so you can't see him. However, overall, a very good career for Christopher Ayer. Uh, won a few things, not a huge amount, but has managed to make the Napoli list of favoured personnel. Uh, is it? Is he here? He's not here, but I looked ahead a couple of years and he was on there. So after this point, he becomes a favoured personnel, which is the third best option. Not quite an icon or a legend, but it does seem like it's a very hard 
thing to do to get onto the legends or icons list at Napoli. And he had a very good Norwegian career as well, helping them have a decent World Cup in 2022 and is the most capped Norwegian player ever. So that is something, maybe not quite as an illustrious career as Martin Odegaard when we compare him against that experiment I did first of all. However, still a very good player. And if you sign him on Football Manager 2016, I'm sure you can turn him into a world-class player. And he's certainly a reasonably cheap option if you can get him for for what Torino got him for then brilliant because he's going to be a really good committed long-term option to have in your midfield defensive central or attacking midfield you can develop him how you like on this save he started off as a defensive midfielder ended up playing central midfield for Napoli but you may want to play him a bit more advanced that's really up to you Anyway, thanks for watching. Please hit that like button for this part two. I'll be releasing another Wonderkid experiment shortly involving uh, a couple of highly requested players, as I said earlier. Thanks for watching. I will see you very soon, guys.